so much for having me today. So when my student asked me to give a talk for TED Talks about my experience studying Chinese Kung Fu in China, at first I was a little hesitant because I wasn't sure how my experience would be relevant to a broader audience. As I thought about it more, I started to realize that my practice of martial arts and Kung Fu had a broad impact on my life, not only martial arts related. In order to give you guys a little bit of context, I think first I need to give you a little bit of my history, tell you where I'm from and how I started studying martial arts in the first place. I first learned martial arts from my father. He studied and taught martial arts for the past 40 years in America. And although I was literally born in his Kung Fu school, I had no interest in studying Kung Fu until I already had graduated high school. At that time, I had some friends who were practicing different types of martial arts. Kung Fu and martial arts has been very popular in America for quite a while. But just in the past 10 or 15 years, they've switched from performance-based martial arts to sport fighting, or MMA, mixed martial arts, as it's been known today. And this is where two guys get in a ring, and basically they just try to beat each other up. And it's become very popular in America. And I had some friends who were studying kickboxing, or tai chi, and I went to one of their schools, and I watched them do a ring fight, and I watched them put on all this rubber equipment, they get in a ring, and they just try to beat the crap out of each other, and as I watched this, I started to realize that their theories and their methodology was somewhat simplistic. Their training was primarily based around practice and around doing it. They didn't have a lot of complex theories. It seemed like their style was somewhat rudimentary. But this inspired my interest. I thought that, well, learning how to fight and learning how to know martial arts could actually be quite useful. And so I went to my father and I said, I want to start learning martial arts. At that time, he told me, in order to learn how to fight, in order to learn martial arts, you need a school. And so that's when we first opened up the Dragon Ball Kung Fu School in Santa Fe, New Mexico. In the beginning, my goals were very simplistic. All I wanted to do was be able to fight. And all I really did as far as practice was practice kicking and punching. And it was relatively simple. As I practiced longer, I started to realize in order for me to become better at fighting, I had to change my body. I started to be confronted with a lot of issues in my body. I did not inhabit my body with clarity. And as I started to practice more, I started to come across the theories that Chinese Kung Fu was based off of. Primarily the Yi Jing, the Wu Xing. And this started to inspire me to learn more about the theories that these martial arts were based on. My goals slowly shifted over time. Fighting took a back seat to learning how to change the way in which I move. As I practiced more, I slowly started to study more and more internal martial arts, which are primarily Tai Chi Chuan, Xin Yi Chuan, Bagua Chuan. And I started to study these, and I started to realize that the theories that these arts were based off of applied universally, not just to martial arts, but also to Chinese medicine, to diet, to observation of the seasons. And this slowly started to shift my interest. And I started to become more interested in studying the philosophy that these martial arts were based off of. For the past 10 years, I have practiced, and for the past about six years, I taught martial arts as my job. And it was very interesting for me. I got to observe numbers of different students. I got to look at how they use their bodies. And I started to realize that these principles and theories started to show themselves in people's movements as well as every other thing I started to see these principles at work. 
This is ultimately what gave me a broader interest in Chinese Kung Fu and traditional Chinese culture. And this is ultimately why I'm here in China today. I first came to Harbin in 2009, and I started to study with a Taiji Chuan teacher here. And I was here for one month, and he gave me a lot of stuff to work with. And I went home, I practiced for several years, all the stuff he taught me, and I started to realize that I needed broader exposure to high-level teachers. So this is when I decided that I was going to move to China. I got rid of my car, I got rid of my house, and I came to Harbin, and I started to teach English to support my study of Chinese Kung Fu. In the past year or so, I've been able to meet with a number of different masters. Some of them are quite famous, some of them are not known. And I started to observe the way that they move. I started to get their philosophy and their theory on Kung Fu. The more people I learned from, the more people I met, I started to realize that the majority of them spent 90% of their practice was focused on the theory, on the theoretical aspects of Kung Fu. And this is exactly what I was after at the time. I wanted to know how these complex theories were the foundation for Chinese Kung and how have high-level teachers made use of these theories? After studying for a while, a funny thing happened. All of a sudden, fighting jumped back into the front seat again. And I was starting to be confronted with the fact that although these teachers had spent their whole life studying theory and philosophy and how exactly these martial arts were supposed to be practiced, I noticed that very few of them tried to put these into practice through fighting. And I started to realize that anything you do, the theory, the philosophy, the thinking of it, has to lead to the doing of it. And so I started to realize the more people I met, there was a certain part was missing. And this was the functionality. And I found it very interesting when I would tell people that I studied Tai Chi Chuan. All my English students, they would kind of laugh at me. You study Tai Chi Chuan? This is something my, my grandparents do in the park. This is not something for a young man. And I found that most of my students had no interest in Chinese Kung Fu. And several of the schools I visited and students I had that were interested in actually fighting and doing sport fighting, none of them practiced Chinese Kung Fu. They all borrowed from Tai Chuan Dao, from Western boxing, from Tai Chuan. And I started to wonder, how could this be? Why did Chinese Kung Fu get shifted from a martial art to now what seemed more like a health exercise? And to me, this was very interesting, because in my study of Chinese Kung Fu, and especially of Tai Chi Chuan, the, the masters that were looked at as being the highest level were known because they were unbeatable fighters. And so I started to wonder, what had been lost, or what was not being practiced? And I was ultimately confronted with the fact that the theory, the thinking of it, had become 99% of the practice. And the doing of it had very little attention focused on it. As I would start to talk to different teachers about this, they would always tell me, well, before you can fight, before you can try to use this, you need to reach the standard. You have to get everything perfect. All the little nuts and bolts have to be in place. And the standard with which they were after almost seemed impossible to ever reach. And so I was always wondering, when are you able to put this into practice? This started to have many parallels in other things I've done, especially teaching English. I noticed most of my English students, they spent so much of their time focusing on the grammar, on all the rules of the language, on all the theory of the language. And they spent a disproportionate amount of time actually trying to speak. A lot of them were actually relatively good at understanding spelling and all of the structure, but they never practiced free speaking. And to me, this had a very big parallel to the martial arts that I was studying. And so I have to think that where I'm at today in my practice of Kung Fu and the experience I've had in China has ultimately brought out a certain dynamic, a certain
certain principle. And this is, your teacher can only give you theory. They cannot put theory into practice for you. They can give you theory, they can show you the standard that those before you have set, but it's ultimately up to you to understand this theory and to test theory against practice. Otherwise, you don't get a complete picture of whatever you're doing, whether it's English, whether it's Kung Fu. Ultimately, you need to understand what is the standard, but you need to challenge that standard. You need to question what you're taught. And you need to do this by putting it into practice. For me, this ultimately led me back to the beginning of what I was looking for in Kung Fu, which was fighting. It, in some ways, brought me full circle. I had a much better understanding of the theories and the principles and the standards of Chinese Kung Fu. And I felt that ultimately, I needed to start to understand these theories and put them into practice on my own. And so I think that to make my experience of martial arts and studying in China relevant for people that have maybe no interest in studying martial arts, is to understand the dynamic that theory needs to lead to practice. The form of something needs to lead to the functionality of something. And so I'm going to leave you guys with a couple quotes that, for me, express this theory better than anything. And they were said by men far smarter than myself. And I feel that it's relevant and necessary to include someone from both schools of thought, the Eastern school of thought and the Western school of thought. So the first quote is a quote from Confucius, Hong Kong. And it goes something like this. To learn and practice what is learned time and time again is pleasure, is it not? The other is from Albert Einstein. And he says, in theory, practice and theory is the same. However, in practice, it is not. I feel that these two quotes express the conclusions I've came to. Because whatever it is you're learning, you need to understand the theoretical, the form. But you, on your own, need to test the theory. You need to test your teachers. You need to question your teachers in the standards. And you need to do this by putting it into practice. And then you will see the whole picture of something. Because in all reality, theory is not what we're after. What we're after is being able to use what we're learning. This is what's important. For my English teachers, or I'm sorry, for my English students, I'm not too concerned if they understand perfect English grammar. I'm more concerned that they can actually speak English, that they can have a free conversation. And so the analogy of English and Kung Fu for me is ultimately these martial arts, Chinese Kung Fu, first and foremost was a fighting art. And at some point along the way, the theoretical, the thinking went too far. And it took away from the functionality. In martial arts in America, there was the other half of that. It was all practice, no theory. And it made things somewhat rudimentary, somewhat simplistic. So ultimately, in anything you do, you need to balance these two dynamics. How do you think about it? And how does your teacher think about it? How does that ultimately lead to your ability to do it, to use it? And this should ultimately give you freedom. This should make you innovative. And this is ultimately the standard to test whether or not you truly understand the theory. If you have functionality and you have theory, you can say that you have learned something. Thank you so much for sharing your time today.